tight for time, avoiding public transport, or maybe it's simply quicker, easier, and cheaper. Either way, these are all good reasons on why you can build your training run into your commute. And you might just be surprised at how effective it can be. Well, today we're gonna take a look at how you can nail that run commute. For many years, I classed myself as a bit of a pro at nailing the run commute. During my early triathlon career, my job meant that I worked in many different offices across the city, meaning lots of different commutes. And during this time, I learned many useful lessons on how to fit my training into my commuting. Now, obviously, this is going to be different for everyone, depending on where you work, what job you do, and what facilities are available to you. But I hope that I can pass on a few useful hints and tips on how you can get the most out of your commute. Many people will think their commute is simply too far to run. But that doesn't have to be the case, as you might not have to run the whole way. There are plenty of good public transport options that can take you part of the way, be this at the beginning or at the end. There is nothing wrong with running the first part and then jumping on a bus or a train to take you the final stretch. If you've got the option to lift share with friends or colleagues, when it's not your turn to drive, get them to meet you halfway. Perfect. Another good option can be to make use of the city's park and ride facilities. You can drive to the edge, park and then run in, no way to public transport and you get to stretch the legs before work. You also don't have to run every day of the week. It might be that you don't have any morning meetings on a Tuesday or you can leave a little bit earlier on a Wednesday. Just pick the days in the week that work best for you. Having said that, I often found that running my commute was much quicker than sitting in traffic or waiting for public transport, so it can be time-saving in more ways than one. Have a bit of a think about the route that you're going to run. There are plenty of good route planning websites out there, such as Commute and Strava Route Finder, that will help you plan a fun and interesting route into work. Also, give yourself a bit of extra time on the first couple of commutes, as it always takes a little bit longer but after a couple of runs, it will soon become second nature. In my experience, packing your bag the night before is usually the best and easiest way to get out the door in the morning. All you need to do is put your running kit on, grab your bag and go. I used to eat my breakfast before I ran, but I know a lot of people that will pack their breakfast and take it with them to eat at work. Even better if you can leave your breakfast at work and it's one less thing to carry. Now, most of you are going to need to transport things to and from work each day. It may be that you can take most things in on Monday, leave them at work and then run without a bag for most of the week. But if you do need to run with a bag, then here are a few things that you can look out for. Try to find a bag that matches the amount you want to carry or has adjustable straps to make it smaller in size, as any loose items will be moving around when you, when you run, making it uncomfortable on your back. One hack that I used to do, particularly in the winter, was to put a small down jacket in the bag to fill any loose space and stop things moving around without making the bag any heavier to carry. Another critical part of the bag is to have a good chest strap, as a chest strap will reduce the strain on your shoulders and also further reduce movement of the bag while you run. A further point to look for in a running bag is to have separate compartments to separate objects from one another, to stop them bouncing into each other, damaging each other while you run. I once ran 10 miles across London with a banana and a laptop in the same compartment and while the banana came off worse, the USB port on my laptop was never quite the same again. Uh, something I'm not massively a fan of, but I know a lot of people do like, is a waist strap. I find they can rub, but depending on the quality of this, it can also help stop the bag moving around when you run. And then finally, I'd say um, if you can get a bag with reflective strips on, this will help, especially in the winter when it might be dark. But you can get good bag covers that are fully reflective as well as waterproof, which helps protect your clothes and work equipment. You can also fit a light to the back of your bag. Yeah, this can just be a bike light and that just adds to the visibility when you're running in the dark. Trousers and shirts can be rolled up easily enough to fit into your bag and often look pretty respectable when unrolled at work. 
To help with this, a tie can be worn to distract from any creases, or a non-iron shirt can often withstand the wrinkles and survive the commute a bit better. If your work has a casual dress code, then this makes it even easier. I used to enjoy it in winter because I could just wear a smart jumper on top of my shirt and that way I wouldn't even need to think about ironing in the first place. Okay, so five final tips that might be worth thinking about for you to nail your run commute. Number one. If you've got a desk or locker or some other place at work where you can store things, consider leaving a spare shirt or pair of trousers rolled up just in case you get to work and realise you've forgotten the essentials. Hey, it happens to the best of us more than once. Number two, a small dry bag can be really useful for containing wet or smelly kit during the day and your co-workers might thank you for this one. Number three, the day before you run, think about what you can leave at work to minimise the amount you need to carry in the morning. Number four, give yourself plenty of time the first few goes, as this will just take the stress off. You don't need to worry about getting lost and most of all, you can enjoy it. And that brings me on to number five. Enjoy it, explore new routes, race the bus, and don't be too smug when your colleagues tell you about how much they've been stuck in traffic. Get out there, enjoy it, and let us know how you get on.